Now we can look at some exceptions to the octet rule. Um, so we said the octet rule is when we'd like to have eight electrons ar around each atom. Um, some things violate the octet rule. So you won't be able to have eight electrons around something if you only have an odd number of electrons. Remember we were putting everything in in pairs. So if you have an odd number, you're not going to have pairs. Or if uh, some ions or molecules um, with less than an octet and some other things like to have more than more than eight electrons. So you can have fewer than eight, you can have more than eight, or sometimes you have an odd number of electrons. So let's see what happens when we have an odd number of electrons first. We're going to look at NO. And so if we think about what NO is, N has five electrons, O has six, so you have 11 electrons total. So if you were to draw the Lewis structure for this guy, minus two gives you nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. Uh, nitrogen is not happy there, so you can take off two of these electrons and share them instead. And now oxygen still has two, four, six, eight, and now this nitrogen has two, four, six, seven. That's about as good as it's going to get. Um, the other way to do this is to look at N, O, and then have three electrons here and over there. When you do the formal charges, you'll find that this structure is actually better. So I'm going to let you guys do the formal charges and, and see what's true about that. So fewer than eight electrons. So there's a couple elements that are happy having fewer than eight electrons. Um, boron's one of them. And we already talked about hydrogen, right? Hydrogen's happy having two electrons or one bond. Beryllium is another one. He's happy having four electrons around it or two bonds. And boron is happy having six electrons around it or three bonds. So those are some exceptions. So if you had something like BF3, boron has three, fluorine has seven times three gives us 21, uh, which has a total of 24. So if you were to draw that Lewis structure out there, you have boron and then you have F, F, uh, F minus six, this is 18, and then two, four, six, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, I'm out of electrons. And you might look at that and say, okay, fluorine's happy, other fluorines are happy, the boron's not happy, so maybe I'll start forming double bonds. And so try that over here. You could put a double bond there, there, or there. And when you calculate the formal charges, what happens is that now the borine, boron has a negative one charge, fluorine has a plus one. Fluorine is the most electronegative atom. It's not going to want a positive charge. So if you look at the formal charges on this first structure that we drew, Boron has three valence electrons, three lines, no dots, he's zero. And each one of those fluorines, fluorine has seven valence electrons minus one line, minus six dots gives us zero. So it's zero all the way around. And so that's actually a pretty favorable structure. So it just happens that boron is happy having just three bonds or six electrons around it. These guys are really small, hydrogen, beryllium, and boron. Um, and so they're going to have fewer than eight electrons, and that's okay. And so the the yeah, so this is the dominant structure. These are kind of less important because they they have terrible formal charges. So if filling the octet on the central atom results in a negative charge on the central atom and a positive charge on one of the more electronegative atoms, then don't fill up the octet on the central atom. So if you just remember that boron is happy just forming three bonds or having six electrons around it, you're going to be fine. Another exception to the octet rule is when you have more than eight electrons. So anything in row three and beyond can do that. So where's row three? This is one, two, this is three. So we'll see this a lot with phosphorus and sulfur. They expand their octet, they'll expand their octet, and they can take on more than eight electrons if they have to. They can do it, and, and you'll know when they have to. It'll be pretty, usually be pretty obvious. So something like PCL5, you do the Lewis structure for PCL5. Uh, phosphorus has five, chlorine has seven. I have five of those. That's 35 and five gives me 40. So I put the phosphorus in the middle and then you have chlorine, chlorine. And I used up two, four, six, eight, ten. I have 30 left over. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Out of electrons. And if you look at that, phosphorus has two, four, six, eight, ten. That's the only way to do it. He has to expand his octet in order to form this compound. We've seen 
Now you may remember we looked at a phosphorus compound before. We looked at PO4, 3 minus. And when we did that, we drew this structure and we said, okay, this satisfies all the rules, but there's actually a better structure that we can make if we allow phosphorus to expand its octet. So if you calculate the formal charges for all of these things, so that oxygen has what six valence electrons, valence minus lines, minus dots, gives us a negative one charge. So every one of those is going to have a minus one. And phosphorus has uh, five valence electrons, minus four, and no dots has a plus one charge. Okay, so now if I expand the octet of phosphorus, right, so with O, 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 and what if I had a double bond O there? So all I did was take one of these lone pairs up here and make it a line instead of a dot. Now how does that change things? This guy is still minus one, but now the formal charge of phosphorus just changed. Five minus five minus zero gives me zero. And this oxygen over here, six minus two minus four gives me zero. And so these have slightly better formal charges. This still has a charge, so I'm still gonna put that in minus three. This guy should also have brackets with a minus three. So this one's actually a better structure. It better describes what's actually happening here. It has a lower set of formal charges. So when the central atom uh, is on the third row or below and expanding out the octet, eliminate some of the formal charges, then you should do that. All right, so let's try a couple more of these. Um, pause the video and you can work through these on your own. Let's see, ICL4, so I, has seven, chlorine has seven, and I have four of those. So that's 28 and seven, that's 35. And I have a negative charge, so add another one, it's 36. So I, Cl, four, I have I in the middle, and then Cl, 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 minus two, four, six, eight. Which gives me 28. Minus 8 gives me 28 here. Whoops. Now I can put on 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And I'm, I have four electrons left. And then I see, okay, so iodine already filled up its octet, but where is iodine located? He's all the way down. He's in beyond row three, right? Here's here's row three. Anything below three, or anything in row three and, beyond, and below, can expand its octet, which means it can take on more than eight electrons. And so, since I have four electrons left, I'm just going to put them right on the central atom. Whoa! So that's what I get there. And this is a charged ion, so I give it a charge. Great. So when I this guy expands its octet, the iodine does, and I can fill it up a little bit more so he can take on the extra electrons. So if you have extra electrons, put them on the central atom. Remember, if you don't have enough electrons, then you start forming double bonds and triple bonds. But this time you have too many of the opposite problem. You have too many electrons, so you're just going to give them to the central atom. Uh, we can also do a little structure for XEF2. Xenon has eight. So remember when I said noble gases don't form compounds? This is one of the weird compounds that can actually form under some strange uh, circumstances. So we have 20, 22 electrons there. Did I do that right? Yep. So X is going to go in the middle. F on both sides. Minus two, four. So I have 18, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I have six left over, two, four, six. So xenon actually takes on two, four, six, eight, ten, which is okay, because where is xenon in the periodic table? It's all the way down here. He's in, you know, row five, so that's beyond row three. So he can take on extra electrons, and he's good.